We appreciate the candidates being here, but without them, obviously, the forum would have like a meeting. And to all of the other who are here, thank you very much. Uh, Emerge USA, for those of you who may not know about it, this is our 10th year. We are not something that started recently. In 2005, an organization started in Houston called CONAC. It merged with an organization in Florida called CBA, and that came about to be Emerge. We are an important for national organizations, 51C3. We have offices here at Coast Texas, in Florida, in Pennsylvania, in Michigan, in New York, um, and uh, uh, starting an office in Virginia and in California. Today, this is the third year or really the fourth candidate forum that we've had. And one of the successes, I may call it, is that this is not quote unquote an emerging candidate forum. It's a candidate forum on behalf of the many communities whose logos are on the left and whose names I will read out to you. The Bangladesh American Political Action Committee, the Bangladesh Association of Houston, Houston 8020, Asian American PAC, Houston Chinese Alliance, Houston Karachi Sister City Association, Indian Muslim Association of Greater Houston, Japanese American Citizens League, Pakistan American Voter Registration Initiative, Pakistan Chamber of Commerce USA, Organization of Chinese Americans, OCA, South Asian Chamber of Commerce, Vietnamese Community of Houston and vicinity. So as you can see, there is a significant amount of uh, diversity that is here as far as the organization that is uh, holding this uh, uh, program. Uh, the format will really we'll go with you in just a moment, but we really appreciate individuals who are here that uh, we will have time after the candidates have had a chance to uh, speak for you all to intermingle, to mingle with them and talk to them. We are hoping that out of this program, the candidates will identify and meet with you and hopefully some of you will become a supporter. Because the real value of a candidate forum is not just listening to the candidate but then following up and actually working for them in their campaign. Tomorrow, as you know, is already voting. We really hope that all of you will participate and not only um, get a chance to vote early if at all possible but also work uh, with the candidates. Uh, once again, thank you all very much for being here. Appreciate your presence. So as you may know, the first hour of today, we will devote to our mayoral candidates that are here with us today. And we'll have a random, we'll let them do an introduction that will be one minute, oh, two minutes. Wow, that's a luxury. You don't usually get that long. Two whole minutes they get to introduce themselves. Mr. Durrani will be upfront and personal to give you your time. And we hope you will observe it or you'll get big or big. And then we'll give you, let me see, uh, we'll give you a random question. And our panel here that I will introduce in a second will be randomly picking a question for you to answer. And that will be for one minute maximum. Then we'll have a general question that each of our candidates will be asked to answer the same question. Um, and that will be a minute and a half. And then each will close with a 30 second closing statement. And we ask you, in your closing statement, to tell us something that you hadn't said before. Something kind of different. Um, so that we can learn a little bit more about you. So we're going to start now. And I'd like to start by introducing our distinguished panel of questioners today. Uh, the first one, please stand when I call your name, is Adiba Brahman, and she is an eighth grade U.S. history teacher. So we won't be able to put anything off from her. She knows all of the ins and outs of U.S. history. Thank you, Adiba. The second one is Kumbar Rizvi, and he led us in our pledge. Kumbar is an engineer. So, uh, Steve, you've got somebody there that understands your thinking. And our last moderator, our questioner today is Basma Salah. And Basma is a master's student at the University of Houston a Public Policy School, and she's also a school administrator. We have a powerhouse group of questioners. All right. We're going to begin, and we'll start. We'll start alphabetically by last name, and Chris, you always get to start first. No, not always. Not always. No, they changed it up. Oh, okay. All right. We're going to 
going to begin with a two-minute introduction. Good afternoon. I'm Chris Bell. Thank you so much for having us here this afternoon. I had the privilege of serving as an at-large member of the Houston City Council and representing many of you as a member of the United States Congress. I'm running for mayor uh, because I believe that we are perfectly positioned here in Houston to move to the next level and to not only be the fourth largest city, but to actually start acting like the fourth largest city and to become one of the most modern cities in the entire country. I talk a great deal about technology because I believe technology is what has allowed cities such as New York and Chicago and Los Angeles and San Francisco to move forward at a faster pace. And I want to see Houston mentioned along with them. If we take greater advantage of technology, if we do a better job of both managing and analyzing data, it will allow us to be a much more responsive city. And whether you're talking about hotel abatement or faster police and fire response times, it'll make a dramatic difference. But being a more modern city isn't all about technology. It's also about uh, being a more compassionate city, in my way of thinking. As we sit here today, close to 25% of our population lives at or below the poverty line. That's unacceptable, and we're going to have to take steps to lift those people up. And I also think being a modern city in a place like Houston means being very respectful and being a champion for our diversity. I always have been, both as a member of council and as a member of Congress, where I had an international relations committee representing all of the diverse communities that made up my very diverse uh, congressional district. I think that we need to do everything possible here in the city of Houston to protect our various cultures that make us such a, a rich city, uh, but also, as I've often said, if we're going to be a melting pot here in the United States and here in Houston, we need to do a better job of melting and coming together. And that's what I look forward to doing as your next mayor. Thanks so much for the invitation to be here. Good afternoon. I'm City Council Member Stephen Costello. My wife and I came to the Houston Gallison area in 1977. She was six months pregnant with our first son. We had $500 and a pinto with no air conditioning. And I took a government job working for the Army in Galveston, where I got my initial training in flooding and stormwater management. And now you fast forward 38 years. I co-founded an engineering company in 1991. We employ over 150 people. We've been recognized as recently as last Friday as one of the best places to work in the city of Houston by the Houston Business Journal. This is the sixth time in eight years. And I'm your at-large councilman representing all of the city of Houston. That's a story that many people in Houston have. I'm representing a city of opportunity. I'm a classic example of it. The reason why I'm running to be your next mayor is to make sure that we maintain that business opportunity for someone who wants to come here, raise a family, and have a career. As your at-large councilman, the challenges that I see that are facing the city of Houston are infrastructure. And I ask you to ask yourself, who better to deliver the infrastructure to the city of Houston than an engineer who's been working in that field for 40 years? We have problems in public safety, both in solving crimes and having a better relationship between our community and our police department. I propose to change that. I propose to get more police officers on the street, get them out of desk jobs and back on the streets and solving crime, and getting involved in the community, going back to community policing. And then as a budget chair for the last five years, I've been working on saving taxpayer dollars, and I will continue to do that through pension so that we can indeed get more police officers on the street. I'm Stephen Costello, and I'm respectfully asking for your support as your next mayor. And I look forward to answering any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Salam alaikum. Namaste. Namaskar. Buenos dias. My name is Adrian Garcia, and I want to be your mayor. I want to be the mayor of all of you. See, I recognize that Houston is uh, the most culturally rich and diverse city in America. Uh, it's a city where uh, we speak about 100 languages every single day. The largest, the third largest international poor community in the country, a diversity that knows no bounds. Uh, so it is an incredible, incredible.
incredible, thriving community, and I'm honored to offer myself uh, and work to earn your support uh, to become your parent. You know, Houston gave me opportunity, just like it's given many of you. Now, my family came here in 1959 and used to And I was, uh, I had the pleasure and the honor of being born here. But I did grow up in a tough neighborhood where tough things happen. But Houston still gave me the opportunity to work for you as a Houston police officer, uh, where I started patrolling the streets at age 19, working in a uh, variety of different neighborhoods from the north end of town, Greens Point, to the southwest part of town. And I served as a, Merlin Deere asked me to help start the Mayor's Anti-Gang Office, and I did, and then Mayor Brown asked me to help lead that office, and I did. So distinguished to, to be asked by those incredible leaders to help uh, keep our city safe. And then you gave me the opportunity uh, to serve you uh, as a council member, uh, where I work alongside Mayor White as, as Mayor Pro Tem. And then you gave me the opportunity to work for you as your sheriff, uh, sheriff the largest sheriff's office in Texas, third largest in America. Uh, this is a city of opportunity. I'm ready to be your mayor to ensure that the spirit of opportunity remains alive and well for the next generation of historians. I hope I can uh, continue to earn your support, and I'm looking forward to continuing to work for you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, my name is Bill King. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize. We've got several events stacked up today because we're getting a late start here. I'm probably going to have to slip out before uh, this is over with. But, uh, happy to be here and get a chance to visit with you. Listen, we live in one of the greatest cities in the world, but the truth is we have a city here today that's not living up to the greatness of this city. Uh, our, we're not making the investment in our infrastructure that we need to to lead our kids and grandkids the kind of city that we inherited. All you need to do is get out and drive on any one of our streets a few blocks in any direction and know that we're not making that investment. Secondly, increasingly people don't feel safe in this city. We have a real spike in crime going on. Uh, we have murders up 54% this year, rapes in this county were up uh, 50, over 50% 50 last year. And frankly, we're just not doing a very good job of enforcing our laws. Now here's a number that I'll bet nobody in the city's ever told you before. Last year, we only saw 6% of the burglaries that were committed in the city. If you committed a burglary last year, you had a 94% chance of getting away with it. We only saw 15% of the robberies, only 24% of the rapes. I don't know if y'all saw this morning, Lisa Falkenberg had a great column in Houston Chronicle telling the story of a young woman who, who was raped, and it's been over two years, the police department won't even return her telephone calls to try to catch the person that perpetrated this crime. That's unacceptable in the city. But the biggest problem we have, frankly, is our finances. Now, if you can imagine this, this is another number I bet nobody in the city has told you. In the last six years, the city's revenues are up by $1 billion. That's a billion with a B. Property taxes are up 24%. Uh, sales tax are up 37%. Water and sewer rates are up 42%. Licensing and permitting fees are up 100%. Yet, we still can't balance the budget, and we added over $3 billion of debt in the last six years, which is the largest amount of debt that we've added in any six years in the city's history. We need to keep the city back to basics. We need to fix the streets, we need to catch the crooks, and we need to balance the budget. Good job. I'm Julia Lane, and I'm running for mayor. The reason I'm running for mayor is because God had given me a dream since 2011. And in 2013, I decided to run. And then in 2015, I was not planning on running, but I decided because he gives me another dream. I don't know why he's keeping that to me all the time, but there's a purpose. I've been in business for 40 years. I've been in the United States 45. My dad is in the US Army. And also, I had been uh, in business in Argentina and the Philippines. I have 10 businesses in Houston. I've been successful and I thank God for that. God has always been blessing me in my whole life. And also the reason I'm running is because I would like to talk about the responsibility and urgency of people of faith in our memorial time election. We have many things that will impact people of faith and freedom of religious freedom. This goes far beyond the hero ordinance. We must keep Houston a place where the people can worship and serve God without fear. 
Here is where I stand, religious liberty. I have a constitutional view of rights and of conscience and religious freedom for individual churches and businesses. Abortion, I do not support abortion in any form. Marriage, I support the biblical view definition of marriage, man and woman. Family, I support the rights of parents to raise their children according to God's design for family. Morality, I am against any police petition ordinances that oppose God's position on morality, example, hero ordinance. Fiscal responsibility, I do not support wasting government money. And right now we are wasting. And also once I become a mayor, we're going to fix the road, and then I'm going to hire all the different detectives, secret agents to find peace because our city is full of corruption. Victoria Lane for me. Thank you. Hello, okay. Is this one ready? Yeah. Okay, uh, can everybody hear me back here? It's good. good. It's good to see so many friends here today. Uh, many of you know me uh, through my work as one of the directors of the United States Agency for International Development. I work with many of you on all types of uh, disaster uh, relief, like in all in Bangladesh and other parts of the world, so it's, it's good to see so many friends here today. Um, those of you that don't know me, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Marty McVeigh. I grew up in a small town in western North Carolina. Uh, my dad was a former police officer who later became a judge, and my mother was an entrepreneur. And together they raised six kids, five girls and one boy, and I'm the youngest out of that, that group. So as you can imagine, I didn't get a lot of bathroom time growing up, but I survived. Uh, and I came to this city for the same reason that uh, a lot of people, a lot of you came to this city, just for opportunity. And I received it. I worked hard at group businesses and uh, was able to receive the opportunity and the promise of our founding fathers of our nation. And I want to make sure that everyone has the same opportunities that I had when I came to Houston. And to do that, we've got to be the city. We've got to make sure that we get our uh, financial house in order, that we're using best management practices, that we recognize that this is an international city and that the world has come to Houston. It's now time to take Houston to the world. There are a great deal of opportunities that will bring new jobs, new revenue, and new opportunities to Houston. But we have to have a businessman, a business person, that understands that management is very important in our fiscal problems that we have in the city, but at the same time, we have great opportunities to bring more opportunity for everyone here in the city of Houston. It's a great task, but it takes someone that understands how to do it. This is not a job that you can learn on the job. My name is Marty Mike Bay, and I get to look forward to getting to know uh, all of you that I don't know. Thank you. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. May I introduce myself? I am Wayne Tonghall, a proud Estonian all my life. I'm a family man with two beautiful kids. I'm a business owner. I'm a business entrepreneur. Currently serving at the Texas State Board of Examiner of Professional Counselor and President of Federation of Asian American Voters. I am before you here to ask you to give me a chance to lead the city of Houston to the city that, uh, that the country was looking forward to, to be on the map. I think the city of Houston, the only thing that we need is a job. And I am the man that with a vision for the city of Houston where I can create a job for everybody. With job enough for the city of Houston, the brand rate will be lower, and I am for the city of Houston where I think that, um, like the nationals from NASA were calling home and stated, a few times that Houston, Houston, we have a problem. And the only problem that Houston have is to have enough job for everybody. And as the next mayor of Houston, I will make sure that the city of Houston will have enough job and have a secure neighborhood. Recently, there's too many crimes going on 
in the city of Houston, especially in the southwest area. As the next mayor of Houston, I will get more patrol on the street. And as well, that I will make sure that job will be enough for everybody and for the gen generation to come. I'm asking you all to help elect Wynn Tyhoff as the next mayor of Houston. Thank you very much. So I am Demetria Smith for Houston Mayor as well. Actually, I'm number one on the ballot. And if you have not been seeing myself in live mayoral debates, it's because I've been excluded. But however, I will still fight as your mayor. Now, my latest accomplishment is fighting against child protective services. I just got a bill passed back in May 23rd, effective September 1st. Child protective services will no longer be able to wrongfully remove your children, families, kids from home based on allegations. Now, why am I in this race? Because the city has issues and the people in the city have issues. So there is a disconnect between the city management and the city leaders and the people. So the people have been left behind in some way, some shape, some form, some fashion. You still been left behind. So my fight is against poverty. My fight is against injustice. My fight is against oppression. What would I like to promote and do for the people in this city? I like to promote more ownership, which brings more tax revenue in this city. We don't have to go out looking for money, we can create it here in our people. I like to bring more businesses and create more business owners. I like to give people purchasing power, but they have to have the financial literacy. You have to have the financial education in order to bring self tax revenue up. So we got many things we could do in this city, but invested in the people is my goal under the Demetrius Smith administration. I am Demetrius Smith for Houston Mayor, but when you vote for Demetrius Smith, you will vote for inclusion, you will vote for equality, democracy, and I am against Proposition 1, Demetrius Smith. This is an international city, and I'm proud that it's an international city. And you know it's an international city when events happen halfway around the globe, and it affects so many people right here in the city of Houston. I know, for example, my good friends have uh, lost family members from the disaster at the Hodge. And there are many others who have been affected. Thousands of lives were lost. And our hearts go out to those families and prayers go out to the families who lost loved ones uh, from that disaster. Uh, we are an international city, we are a world class city. Uh, we are diverse, but diversity doesn't mean anything unless we talk about inclusion. And it's important to have people from all walks of life, from all faiths, at the table of decision making. We can talk about diversity all day long, but until you see people that are part of the workforce from top to bottom, until you see like engineers working in the city of Houston, until you see people who are taking advantage of the economic benefits that are derived from the city, until the services that the city provides are dispersed throughout our entire city, then we are simply talking the talk, but we're not actually walking the walk. I've been in the legislature now for 26 years. When Democrats were in control, I sat on the Appropriations Committee. When Republicans were in control, I sat on the Appropriations Committee. I am Vice Chair of the House Appropriations Committee today. Uh, with a budget of over $200 billion. Uh, when it comes down to balancing the books, when we face a $10 billion shortfall with the state, Republicans ask me to sit at the table. When we face a $27 million shortfall, Republicans ask me to remain at the table. We can all be right on the issues, but the question is at the end of the day, who can make things happen in this city? Who can move it along? Who will be in fight for the inclusion? And who do you believe will have the passion and the confidence and the capability to move this city forward and make us a world-class, international, welcoming, and inclusive city. I hope you will decide that Sylvester Turner is that person.
Dana and Jean. You can rest this year with your own next year. Also, I want to call to your attention in the back of the room uh, on the table, we have uh, Alex Tang, who's representing the county clerk's office, and he's brought a number of materials here, especially the sample ballot, so you can see what that looks like before you go to the polls Monday or all next week or early vote or on the 3rd of November. And all of the early vote locations. Now you remember that during the next two weeks you can vote anywhere where there's an early vote location. On November 3rd though, you must vote in your precinct poll. So um, it's, er it's easier to do it in the next two weeks, so please try to do that. Uh, also, if you want to serve as a poll worker, uh, Alex, are they still hiring? Yes, we've been hiring all year round. All year round, okay. Well, there's applications for that, and there it is a paid position. All right, so let's get started in the next segment, and our distinguished panel will be calling the name out of the candidate that we would like for you to answer what we call our second answer. After events in Ferguson and around the country, the question about the behavior and role of police especially in minority communities, has been extremely relevant. How will, how will you seek diversity among police officers in the city of Houston? Well, I, uh, th this is uh, a question that's come up often. And the reality is that we live in such a diverse city, uh, one of the most in the nation, and we need to make sure that our police officers uh, look like the people that they are sworn to protect. I have a great deal of experience, international experience around the world and other countries in bringing people together, building up nations through police systems, through infrastructure, economic development, and many other things that bring people together. We need to make sure that our police department has the, the most uh, technology of any place that we can find. Uh, and that means to have body cameras, that means to have best practices, that means to look at other cities uh, and municipalities around the world to make sure that we're doing the best thing for the people of our city. So we have to modernize uh, Houston Police Department. We have to look for ways to partnership, partner with other law enforcement agencies uh, in our region. This next question is for Mr. Chris Bell. We are a multicultural city, diverse and growing. However, in our state, we have certain cities and mayors fostering an environment where every person does not feel welcome and individual rights are not protected. For example, in the city of Irving, a young 14-year-old boy named Ahmed got arrested for bringing a clock to school. If you were mayor of Houston and this happened under your watch, how would you handle the situation? Well, I would certainly be against arresting young kids for bringing clocks to school. I don't think that's a good policy, and I think that situation was completely bundled. And we do have to be sensitive to, to the various cultures that we have in the city of Houston, and I think I spoke to some of that during my uh, opening remarks. Uh, when you live in a city that is this culturally, culturally diverse, I, I think it's incumbent upon the mayor uh, to be reaching out and building relationships, strong relationships with uh, people in the various communities so that you will know their unique concerns. You can't just sit down at City Hall and pretend that you're going to be aware of everything that's going on in the city uh, that is this diverse. And I think as far as the police department is concerned and law enforcement is concerned, they're going to have to be reaching out as well and developing those relationships because people in the various communities aren't always going to be feel comfortable taking the first step. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Uh, this question is for uh, Sylvester Kerner. The new Census Bureau data confirms that Asian Americans are the fastest growing ethnic group in the U.S. How will you make certain that competent and qualified Asian Americans count among your full-time staff at all department levels? What will you do to ensure that the city has executive staff reflecting the diversity of our community 
especially those from the Asian American community? Thank you, I think it's an ex excellent question. Uh, as I indicated in my opening comments, we can talk about uh, diversity, but the key component uh, and the action term is inclusion. And I want to see Asian Americans <coughs> reflected, uh, for example, within the city of Houston at every level of government, from the top, mid-management, all the way throughout. That's critically important. When it comes to boards and commissions and task force, I want to see Asian Americans on each and all of those boards reflected in that. When it comes to establishing a direct liaison to the mayor, not to an assistant, but to me, I want to establish that relationship along the way. Or when it comes to the economic opportunities that are derived from the city of Houston, I want you to be able to see those economic opportunities where Asian Americans are included in a very real way. That's what I talk about when we talk about inclusion, being a part of the decision-making process. And it's one thing for me to advocate. It is another for Asian Americans to actually be at the table advocating for themselves. Next question is for Victoria Lane. Many Asian Americans in Houston are small business owners running convenience stores, restaurants, and gas stations. These are hardworking people trying to run their business without fear of falling victim to crime. How will you help small business owners feel safe? Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hire some secret agents, about 20 of them to find all these crooked policemen. Because usually the, the, that's the robbery, is the crooked policeman. He sends somebody there. You know, all usually is the people that are in the office also. Uh, one of the person that I put, uh, reported to the FBI, he was uh, sending their kids to go to sell some drugs and alcohol. So that's not right. And so the thing is to protect them, we have to have some insider that's also with balance where the, there's no police you know, involvement on this. Because sometimes the police plant a drug in your house and pretend that you're a drug dealer or in your uh, store. So we have to protect our uh, grocery store as a small business because I feel like they want to be safe. One of my friends, her husband died, they killed him right there in the uh, convenience store. And at least he got, she got life insurance, 250000 but the sad thing is she lost her husband. But we need to protect the convenience store because there's a lot of robbery. Thank you. Thank you. This next question is from Mr. Stephen Costello. Mobility and transportation are top concerns for many in Houston as traffic gets worse and worse. What other forms of transportation do you support to ease the congestion? Well, thank you. I am the current chairman of the Transportation Policy Council for the Houston Garrison Area Council. And as chairman in that role, we are responsible for distributing billions of dollars of federal and state dollars to the eight county region for mobility and transportation. Now, that being said, I'm an advocate for mass transit. I fully support the Metro New Bus Network. We need to have a safe and reliable system that people can have confidence on. We need to complete the network. We're obviously, where we're building the bus rapid transit on Post Oak, we still have a gap in the system, which is down Richmond or what they call the University Line. But what we really need to be doing, because this region is constantly growing, is we need to focus on commuter rail. And so I will continue to advocate for starting the planning effort because it's going to take years before we can actually get to start the construction of commuter rail. And with commuter rail, we'll bring people into the city. Success of Metro. For uh, Mr. Williams, uh, that I asked last time. So the new Census Bureau data confirms that Asian Americans are the fastest growing ethnic group in the U.S. How will you make certain that competent and qualified Asian Americans count among your full time staff at all department levels? What will you do to ensure that the city has executive staff reflecting the diversity of our community, especially those from the Asian American community? Well, thank you for the question. First of all, I'm a proud Asian American as a candidate. And looking down on the audience, I see myself, my family. I'm asking you all to vote for me first. Being the next mayor of Houston, I certainly will protect the Asian interests. I will make sure that 
the southwest area here will be free of crime and, and cut out of crime rates. That's what I will do. I will have more control on the street. I will make sure that uh, the Asian American would have the representation in all part of city of Houston, all part of the public. And as well as being the next mayor, I would. I am an Asian American. I know what your needs are and what your interest is, and therefore I'm asking you all to consider me to work and work hard for you. And thank you. Next question is for Adrian Garcia. How will you ensure Asian American small business owners have a seat at the table with big business and are able to secure contracts with the city? When I was the chair of the Minority Women Business Enterprise Committee for the City of Houston, I fought very hard and I have, I've been told by folks uh, within the business community that there has been no greater champion than when I was the chairman of that uh, particular committee. And that's what I'm going to continue to do, ensuring that, number one, that if we have goals uh, that are to be accomplished, that the contractors are accomplishing those goals. Secondly, I don't want small businesses to stay small. So I want to encourage and work with you to create venture protege programs, joint ventures, so that you will compete for the bigger contracts uh, so that your respective uh, uh, companies and businesses and business opportunities can grow. But I want to make sure that uh, I have an advisory of the Asian business community. As I've done throughout my career, taking input from those of you that are actually doing the work to understand how we can do better and to ensure that the city bureaucracy is being responsive uh, to your applications and is uh, providing you good uh, input. Many times people will not be successful with the contract, but all they're told is it didn't work. I want to make sure you're giving constructive feedback so that you can be prepared the next time around. We are a multicultural city, diverse and growing. However, in our state, we have certain cities with mayors fostering an environment where every person does not feel welcome and individual rights are not protected. For example, in the city of Irving, a young 14-year-old boy named Ahmed got arrested for bringing a clock to school. If you were mayor of Houston and this happened under your watch, how would you handle the situation? If I was the mayor of Houston, that would not be a policy with the Houston Police Department, number one. And number two, we all have to get back to protecting every citizen's constitutional rights. And that began with the leadership. That began with the elected officials as well. So what I, I would like to do as mayor, as I've said before many times on this trail, is hold other elected officials accountable for their own constituents. They have to be held accountable. I would like to have a call center to make sure those phone calls, those problem calls, are rerouted back to the constituent where it belongs to. So therefore, protecting everyone's rights, making sure everyone is included, is what I'm about. When I say vote for democracy, that's exactly what I mean by voting for Demetrius Smith. That is inclusion, that is fair equality, fair opportunity, and believe me, I am ready to catch all of the crooks, but the crooks I want to catch is everyone in the judiciary system and the elected officials just as well, because they make money off of people's hardship. I mean, if you can't afford an attorney, they won't get you. That means if you don't have no money, you don't have no knowledge, they will continue to build this bureaucracy. So I will bust it up, and I'm Demetrius Smith. Thank you. Uh, this question is for Bill King. How will you ensure Asian American small business owners have a seat at the table with big business and are able to secure contracts with the city? I think that one of the sure structural problems for any small business and doing business with the city are the financial and bonding requirements. Some of those are statutory, some of those are imposed by the city of Houston. I think we need to find ways to make sure that small businesses are not disqualified uh, because they don't need the financial balance sheet or they don't have the bonding capacity. They frankly can't ever get to those things if they can't get uh, the business in the first place. So I think that's the big structural issue that we have to address. 
beyond that, I think we, we need to continue to support the uh, office of business opportunity and the mayor's office that uh, finds these uh, opportunities and brings everybody to the table. And uh, I see my time is up with that. Unfortunately, I'm also going to have to leave because I've got another event. I'm sorry that uh, we have sort of a little late here, but I'll be looking forward to seeing you all somewhere around the campaign field. Thank you very much. Peace 
woman patrol the streets of Harris County. And we're not going to stop there. But when you diversify and you open your government, you open the doors, and you allow the community to participate simply because they want to make the city better, then there's no opportunity for <laughs> Once again, uh, as an Asian American mayor, I'm asking you all to vote for myself to where I can serve you. And all Houstonian is important. As an ex mayor of Houston, if any one of citizens of Houston travel abroad and got themselves in trouble, I would raise in my voice for my people. I would fight for Houstonian who trouble overseas and got them some trouble. <coughs> and citizen of Houston, when you are traveling abroad to conduct your business or visit your family, and the government of the country that harassed you, that arrested you, I will not tolerate it. I will raise my voice and I will make sure that they are coming back home peacefully in one piece. And that's what the leadership is about. I am not the mayor for one group of people, and I am asking you all to vote for me to where I can be mayor for all of us. We all want to see the future, and that's what I'm going to leave Thank you. Mr. Stephen Costello, how would you uh, make sure that our city and your administration does not harbor an atmosphere of suspicion, mistrust, and profiling? Thank you. As an at-large council member, I represent all of the city of Houston. And as an elected official, when I'm outside of the city of Houston, I'm proud to say that our city is a city majority of minorities, and that we are a microcosm of what the country will be over the next 25 years. The underlying theme of this particular question is really about discrimination. And that's one of the reasons why, as an elected official, I voted twice for the Hewitt Ordinance. I understand that now we have an opportunity to pass the Hill Ordinance, and we all have an opportunity to vote. And I trust that the city of Houston and the residents of the city of Houston will make the right decision moving forward. Nobody, and I'll say it again, nobody should be discriminated against in the city of Houston. And as a father, and as a grandfather of two granddaughters, your ordinance is not a bathroom. It's about discrimination. And as a businessman, I really believe that moving forward, the Hero Ordinance is necessary for the health and welfare of the city of Houston.
Thank you. Mr. Sylvester Turner, same question. When people look at the face of Houston, what is it that they see? I think they see a great deal of diversity, and we are the most diverse city in the country. When people look at the face of the administration, where the special attorney has made it, I think the question will be, what do you see? And do you see that diversity reflected throughout the entire workforce of the city of Houston, the boards and the planning commission? I think one way that we nullify or mitigate against profiling, because profiling takes place not only in this city and the state, but across the globe. How do you mitigate it? And you mitigate it by having that diversity included in the decision-making process. When you are part of the decision-making process, it's kind of difficult to say that my administration is profiling, or engaging in profiling, when you yourself are at the table making the decisions. And I think when, you, and when that takes place, then you have total inclusion. So you can't talk about thus to turn a profile when you are a part of the leadership, when you are at the table, when you are helping to make the decisions, when you are helping to set the policy. And when you leave this country as a part of this city, I think uh, that will tell you the American passport carries a great deal of weight all throughout the globe. And so sometimes I think we look outside to answer that we can find within. And what I've discovered in my 26 years of being a legislator, Relationships matter. Relationships are important. And the stronger the relationship, the less people believe that they are not a part of it. So a strong relationship with the mayor, I think, goes a long way to nullifying any thoughts of racial post -power. Thank you. Mr. Well, I want to applaud Councilman Costello for bringing up the Equal Rights Ordinance. I, too, support it. My only regret is that Ben Paul could not be here, so we couldn't have a detailed discussion about restrooms and what we do in them. But it's not a bathroom ordinance, it's a non-discrimination ordinance, and it's very important for a modern city to have that ordinance go, going forward. Uh, the situation involving this man Gillis is rather horrifying. I've talked to Councilmember Gonzalez about it. He, of course, was on the plane, and they learned far too late uh, what was actually going on and could not do uh, anything about it, but since she was leading a city delegation and trying to build a bridge between uh, Houston and China, I think it's incumbent uh, upon the city to continue to work with her family and the federal officials and bring as much pressure to bear as possible to bring her home safely uh, in the future. Also, the question implies that this type of discrimination and suspicion uh, is already profiling is already occurring here in the city of Houston, and I'll tell you, when we read about Ferguson, Missouri, and Baltimore, Maryland, something that I found deeply troubling about those situations uh, is that people knew the culture in the police department. People knew uh, what was happening. It had been written about it. It had been documented. And they chose to simply try to sweep it under the carpet and do nothing. When those types of situations were brought to my attention as mayor, we're going to start doing something about it on the front end, sitting down and communicating, because oftentimes on the front end, Communication can solve the problem, and you can eradicate the problem, and that's what we'll do. Thank you. And we finally, finally, we have uh, our last candidate to respond, Mr. Barney McVeigh. Thank you. This is uh, about international diplomacy. The question was basically, how will you protect Houstonians abroad? No one else on this stage has the international business and government and diplomatic experience that I have. As I told you earlier, in 2011, I was appointed by President Barack Obama to serve as one of the directors of the United States Agency for International Development. And in that role, I promoted the foreign policy objectives of the United States and carried out tasks that the U.S. government and other countries worked on jointly. I've been in fields, I've been in areas that are, are disaster zones, both man-made and natural disasters. And this is about working with other governments to get a solution. As I, if you watch the debates, any of the debates in the last uh, few days, you heard what I said. My two tasks as your next mayor are simple, <coughs> is to protect Houstonians and to protect the interests of Houstonians. That means here and abroad. So what would I do as mayor? I'd be on the phone with the State Department because I have relationships there. I would be on the phone with the White House because I have relationships there. I would be on the phone with uh, government officials in China because I have relationships there. I would be on the phone with uh, private business people in China because I have relationships there. This is a, not about discrimination in Houston. 
It's about discrimination abroad and protecting Houstonians wherever they are. Regardless of whether you're an American citizen or not, you are a Houstonian if you live in this city, and I will fight to protect you every single day. Thank you all. Now for our final segment, we'd like for each of you to close out with a 30-second closing statement, and we ask you to tell us something that you about yourself that you haven't mentioned before. the year is out, what about that? Uh, and then let me say in my closing seconds, I've had the privilege of working with Representative Wu and Representative Ho. And, and what I will say to you, in this campaign is made, and I feel very comfortable about it, I am reaching out to this community, and I'm asking for your support. But diversity is like a two-way street. You reach out, but you also ask people to join you. I'm reaching out. I'm asking you to join me.
I created the Food Desert Program to give grocery stores in underserved neighborhoods, and I helped pass a payday lending to help people get out of the cycle of predatory lending practices. That's as a council member. Just imagine what Steve Costello as your next mayor can do. I'm Stephen Costello, and I'm respectfully asking for your support. Thank you very much. I learned nothing, nothing new from that, so I'm going to try to follow the instructions. On Friday, a couple of my opponents said that they liked the way I could tell a joke. So let me make a confession. Before moving to Houston in 1988, I lived in Amarillo, Texas, and I was a news reporter. In Amarillo, there was a comedy club, and the comedy club had an amateur night. And I always wondered what it would be like to stand on stage and tell a joke. So four different times, I appeared at amateur night. And I did so well that a comedian from Houston offered to bring me down here and let me start making regular appearances. But I decided to stay with journalism and then went into law and public service. But I'm very happy I had that experience telling jokes because it's coming darn happy in this campaign. <laughs> Association of Greater Houston, Latapa, Hussein, 